I'm sorry, but I find it completely unnatural. I don't get why you think cremation's so bad. Everyone outside Navarra burns their dead. All those lost vessels. Fine mansions reduced to ash. Manfred, for instance. How would his wisp have fared if I hadn't given it a body? <laughs> Where or uh, who did you get his body from? There was no single donor. The arms were recovered from a charnel pit. The ribs were a gift from a dear friend. And Manfred's wisp picked out his own skull from some donations. That was quite the day. He's been fine company during my necropolis excursions ever since. What does Manfred understand, exactly? Simple things, but he grows. Spirits of curiosity are voracious learners. The more he experiences, the more sophisticated his conclusions. With guidance, of course. <laughs> yep, same to you. It's just Manfred's way of saying hello. I encountered him as a wisp in the necropolis years ago. A simple spirit, but so curious, he refused to leave my side. So, you built a skeleton for the spirit to live in? Spirits are formed from the emotions and desires of people in the mortal realm. Manfred's wisp came from curiosity. It's these spirits which animate the dead. Their drive revives the corpse, yet the corpse colors their actions. Thus, the eternal question, are undead, inhuman spirits puppeting a body, or does some shade of the departed return? I can't answer that. Can you? I've come to believe there is a return. I swear I could see it sometimes, Rook. A glint of recognition of something more in the dead. Hey, that's my sleeve. Are you trying to steal my buttons? As well as a certain mischievousness, Manfred.
I know you can handle this. Trust yourself and trust the team. Stop by for a workout? No one said saving the world would be easy. Just wish it were easier. I'm back, and I'm on the job. That's all I want to say about it right now. If you're looking for the apples, I put them in the kitchen. I was looking for you, actually. You have a job for me? No. I was just wondering if you were okay in here. We could get you a room. Uh, the lighthouse just makes more... It's easy to trap spite in here, and there's snacks, and no view of the Fade. I'm good, Harding. Monsters, huh? 
Didn't figure you for an artist. This? It's by necessity. If you know your enemy, their weak spots, maybe you live another day. You've got a flair for the dramatic. Nothing scarier than the real thing. What will you do with it? Standard bestiaries are always some mage drawing things they've never seen, taking the piss out of it. They don't understand how when the hunt ends and you come nose to nose with an ogre, someone's going to die. So I'm making the real Monster Hunter manual. Who are you doing it for? Balmor, that imbecile in Tebenter, lecturing on things he doesn't know about. And Ludric over in Ravain thinks taking a rock wraith down with a lucky shot makes him a champion. What do you care? Jealous? Of course not. I just think the experts should have some actual expertise. Tosh could learn a thing or two. Ooh, ouch. I get it. She knows dragons. But what about fighting a Sylvan or a Dartmonger? Don't tell me I'm using the wrong blade. Sounds like a fun read. I'm in. You have to buy it first. Where's the Gloom Howler? Can't carve it till I know what it is. You want a piece of the Howler boy? Is he ready? Was I ready the first time I fought a Herlock? Well, he's still alive. I got my ass handed to me. Broke four ribs and cracked my jaw. Then I got back up and drove a blade through its skull. In this line of work, Asan and I are only as strong as the quarry we hunt. Makes sense. He'll learn to fight by fighting. I don't know another way. Out there in the world, you sink or swim. Can a half lion, half eagle swim? Don't know. Asan? Which half was that? Search me. Both halves share the same stomach. <laughs> right. I'll see you around. Anything new? I'm sure you'll uncover something. Didn't Radornis choose a... Your warden contacts, Efka and Antoine, you think they'll come through? They'll try. Well, it's more than we've gotten from the first warden. Where'd you meet them anyway? It was the Deep Roads. They were there on warden business. Varric and I were after Solus. We didn't tell them at the time, of course. But you survive a deep stalker attack together, and you make fast friends. There's a problem. 
They didn't deserve this. No one does. And now a dragon! What's happening to this city? I heard some people lost their home. What could you do anyway? Why did Morgan want to meet in Minrathis? Isn't she helping the Veil Jumpers in Arlathan? Indeed. But today we have a guest, and she needed the anonymity that only a city provides. Well, look who it is. Good to see you, Lace. Rook, you remember how Varric and I served the Inquisition? Well, this is Inquisitor Lavellin, the woman who led us all. It's an honor to meet you. Relax. I won't be trying to arrest you like the First Warden. Ah, oh, you heard about that. Dorian Pavis is an old friend. He filled me in. Indeed. You have had many eyes upon you, Rook. Morrigan and Harding have told me about what you've accomplished since taking over for Varric. You've put together an impressive team, and you've got the best chance, maybe the only chance, to stop Elganon and Gillanain. We've been doing what we can, but I'll be honest, right now, it feels like we're in over our heads. You've already faced setbacks. You'll face more. Your actions will have consequences. Did you see what happened to the Viper? We know all about consequences. Such thinking is a trap you can ill afford. The Viper was blighted because of Elgin and Gillanane, but the city of Treviso was saved because of you. I wasn't ready to become the Inquisitor. I wasn't ready to have to choose between helping Templars or Mages, or decide the fate of every Grey Warden in Southern Thedas. Eventually, when the choices I made caught up with me, I disbanded the Inquisition rather than let it turn into another problem. Maybe someday you'll face the same situation. But I'm asking you not to worry about that future until we have one. Right now, we need you to stop the gods. All right. I'll do my best. And while you do so, Rook, the Inquisitor will do her best to ensure that the rest of the world remains intact. A daunting prospect, given that most of the South is under siege by Darkspawn. It's that bad? If not for the Inquisitor, the South would have collapsed completely. She has not been idle while you assembled your team. I thought the gods were mostly active up here. It's really that bad in the south. Elganon and Gillanane have indeed restricted their activities to the north. But the forces they deployed to the south, the strange new darkspawn, have spread fear and corruption greater than any blight in history. Darkspawn have cut through the center of Vorlay. Valroyo and Halam Shiral are barely holding out. Ferelden would have fallen already, if not for help from Orzammar. With Denerim lost, the Ferelden's are holding the line at Redcliffe. The Free Marchers have the worst of it. Acting Viscount Aveline Valen led the evacuation of Kirkwall. She's taking her people and what's left of her army to help Prince Vale keep Starkhaven. Maker, we didn't know. My ma... Don't worry. I called in a favor with the Divine. Your mother's safe with some old friends. Thank you. The Inquisition might be gone, but my name still carries some weight. I've used it to get people working together where they can. Again. The South is my problem, not yours, Rook. You stop the gods, 
And I'll make sure the rest of Thedas doesn't fall to the Blight. If the South is in such turmoil, why come up here just to talk? And how did you get here so fast? Did you think you were the only one to unlock the secrets of the Alluvians? Morgan helped the Inquisition use the Alluvians to travel. While I lack the Dreadwolf's Viravas, I may still scurry between the walls of this world to be where I might do the most good. The Inquisitor asked to meet you, and I thought it might help you to meet her. What I really need right now is information. If you have anyone who can help... I'm sorry. The only reliable sources of information I have up here are Morrigan, Dorian, and Harding. All of whom are already helping us. I understand. The Inquisitor did not come all this way to leave you with empty words, however. She brought something no one else could. A wolf statuette? We've found others like it in the crossroads. Where'd you find yours? I found it right around the time Solus's ritual failed, when he was pulled into the Fade. We've examined the magic, and it's tied to the Veil. To him. Somehow. Solus is ancient, and his magic is part of him in a way far beyond that of mortals. I suggest you take it to the crossroads and see if something in the lighthouse calls to it. Perhaps it will yield some insight into your new ally. I appreciate it. Solus has been helpful while he's trapped in the Fade. But anything that can help me get inside his head will help counter him getting inside mine. Wisely spoken. Solus rarely lies directly, but he finds ways to weave the truth into a noose you find yourself wearing. Solus was... important to me. If this statuette helps you understand him, if it uncovers something that... Honestly, I don't know. I wish I did. But this feels like a part of him. And whatever he and I once were, I think, I, I hope, it might help you. We should go, Inquisitor. The armies in the south need you. Right. Harding, stay sharp. You're my eyes in the north. Always, Inquisitor. Rook, good luck. If I come across anything else that can help, you'll be the first to know. Thank you.
Usually have to dodge traps and fight spiders to see this much old elven stuff. Talk to Isabella if you want to sell any of it. She'll get you a good deal. Spoken like a veteran treasure hunter. Yep. For gold and glory. The lords make runs no one else can. Isabella's undies would catch fire if she saw all this. But you deal with a lot of nasty traps during those treasure hunts. Yep. What's the most complicated one you've dealt with? Old elven armory. Had letters on tiles. Probably supposed to spell out the name of a god or something. Probably? I don't read elven. Found handholds in the ceiling and swung across. Well, that sounds more like a puzzle than a trap. Ugh. Puzzles. You got the right idea going across the ceiling. Varric and I ran into an old elven puzzle once while hunting for Solus. There were these talking statues. Riddles? One only lied, one only told the truth, I think. Ugh. What'd you do? Varric gave them an autographed copy of his book. <laughs> Turns out he's really popular in the Fade. <laughs> nice. So, why do the Lords of Fortune care enough about dragons to have a dedicated dragon hunter? Lots of great old crap ends up in dragon hordes. Why do dragons care about gathering treasure? It's not like they go to the market. Dragons like metals and gems. Anything glittery catches their eye. So they're like really large magpies? Hmm. Kinda. And they live for centuries. Lots of time to gather a bunch of shiny crap. Plus all the gear carried by idiots who thought they could kill a dragon. Feel free to use the ancient elven artifacts for weight training, but nothing leaves with you, okay? Don't worry about that. The Lords of Fortune aren't thieves. Most of us shadow dragons are wanted for worse than theft. But if some lords are in it for themselves... Nah. Anything we hunt is salvage. Old forgotten ruins and crap. And we make sure we're not screwing over a culture that lost it. That's what my mother does with the Kunari stuff. So your mother appraises Kunari artifacts the Lords of Fortune find? Yeah. She tells them how rare something is. How much it might be worth. Also tells them if they found something cultural. Cultural? You know, important. Stuff you don't want going to some rich noble's collection. The Lords send that stuff back to the Kunari in Parvalin. They pay the Lords a finder's fee. Interesting. The Lords do all this out of the goodness of their hearts? We do get paid. Name another job where you get danger pay for killing giant spiders. <laughs> right. For gold and glory. The Lords are good people. They helped my mother when she came here from Kantar. She got here with nothing but me and the clothes on her back. The only skill she had was Kunari history. The Lords gave her work. How does the Ravani Royal Guard feel about the Lords of Fortune? They used to complain about us. But that was before the Antam invaded Ravain. Hmm. And now, Ravain sees the benefits of having a bunch of heavily armed people on their side. Same for the Pirate Armada. It's bigger than Ravain's official navy. But we're also helping save old artifacts. The Antam are burning ruins as they move south. We get artifacts out before the Antam destroy them. Magical stuff. Cultural stuff. Stuff you don't want to lose. Get some rest. We'll be in the thick of it soon enough. Okay. I was gonna go back to Ravane later. Got a thing to do for my mother. You can come along. If you want. Do I need to be ready for combat? Or traps? Nah. Alright. Just let me know when. Rook, interested in visiting the Memorial Gardens? What are you up to? I must tend to some rites in the necropolis. I'd like to show you its more peaceful side.
cannot say. Who created you? I cannot say. What can you say? I cannot say. Right. Deserve that. Got the Archive spirit working, I see. Rook, you're here. And I did. Sort of. A little bit. It appears, but it won't tell me anything. You simply ask the wrong questions. A common affliction of the weak-minded. Also that. It's kind of mean. I thought it was just an archive. How can it be mean? The creator. It's creator, I mean. An archive spirit takes on the personality of whoever makes it. Which? Okay, that's an idea. Syrian learned a lot, taught me a lot about these archives. They have, well, not thoughts like us, but sort of pathways, I guess. They can only respond to specific questions worded in specific ways. So, if you're powerful, like almost God-level powerful, how would you talk to someone you see as lesser? Really condescendingly, based on experience so far. Right! You wouldn't ask questions, you'd tell them what to do, so let's try that. Archive, tell me who built you. One of the greatest of Elvenan, a steward of her glory. Truly, I was blessed to bathe in his warmth. Anaris built me, and to him I shall someday return. You mean... The Forgotten One? I cannot say. Good point. That was us. A Forgotten One? You mean the bad gods parents used to scare their kids into behaving? Don't speak their name or they'll come for you. Now we know what the so-called good gods were like. Really like, I mean. So who knows what they really were? The Forgotten Ones. They used to say Solus was one, so best case scenario, like him? Worst case, well, you heard it talk. Right. So this thing's dangerous if it belonged to one of them. Could be, but still important and invaluable. Everything Anaris knew, this thing knows, and my people deserve to know. If I can get it to tell me. Archive. Tell me about the Evanuris. A group of cowards hiding behind their more powerful magic and superior numbers. Their jealousy of Anaris was palpable. Their war is unending, but Anaris will prevail. Archive, tell me about the Dreadwolf. An ideologue and a fool who will soon pay the price. When Anaris dispatches the Evanuris, he will spare a thought for Fen Harel. You've got a chance to learn more about our people. Go for it. Just be careful and try not to break anything. Right. Thanks, Rook. All thanks must be given to Anaris, for he will cast down the oppressive Evanuris and take his rightful place. What a shame I can't stay longer. Good luck. Appreciate the support. Nev, settling back in. More or less. Lots to catch up on, but when isn't there? I'm ready to get back to work. If we could skip the personal catch-up. Not the day for it. Take all the time you need. Looking for something? Minrathos, I 
cannot imagine what Nev feels. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Please do. I need to hear an actual voice now and then. Can't imagine why. I'm starting to dream that I'm a griffin. Squawk. Well, you get high marks for effort. He's toying with me. So what brings you by? Just curious, really. Wondering what it's like being a Grey Warden. There have always been these legendary warriors living apart from the world. Don't know about that. I spent time with people who were bad right up till they took their vow. How so? Weishaupt is the last stop for the wrong sort. If you're facing prison or worse, you can always join the Grey Wardens and take your chances with the Blight. And just how, uh, wrong are the wrong sort. Thieves, brigands, pirates, and the odd murderer now and then. Sounds fun, right up to the murdering. At least now they're murdering Darkspawn. I've heard about Weishaupt. Never been there. It's a giant fortress, and home of the Grey Wardens. It's been standing for as long as anyone remembers. At least since the first Blight. Does it have floating buildings like the lighthouse? No, but things float up from the latrines. Huh. Fun bunch you hang out with. The wrong sort have their charm. Has your first warden always been... well... A stubborn bastard? One way of putting it? He means well in his own way. He's old-fashioned. Tradition is everything. Keeps us disciplined. We never deviate from it. He'll have to. Elganon and Gillanine won't play by his rules. If he even believes in them. The man doesn't have much imagination. Even the right sort can be the wrong sort. A hot meal and warm bed in Weishaupt is better than rotting in some dungeon. It would be, but the food's always cold, and Weishaupt's drafty in the winter. Are you really selling it? It gets better. When Darkspawn threaten a village, when innocent people are in danger, then we swoop in, swords held high, armor gleaming, while a hundred faces look to us for salvation. And they all live to see the sunrise because of what we do. Okay. Now I get it. Best part is the warden fighting alongside you. Maybe they've done some bad things in the past. But after that day, it's different. There's some honor in their life where there wasn't before. Nothing like seeing redemption happen before your eyes. We all need that chance. Put past sins to right. It makes the Warden stronger to have people in our ranks who've lived in the shadows. When the storm comes, you don't want farmers and florists fighting archdemons. It takes the wrong sort to put the world right. Kinda like us, I suppose. Minus the skeleton butler. I don't know. Manfred the Warden has a ring to it. <laughs> How about we quit while we're ahead? See you around. You cannot do this, Algernon. You swore that we would give up our commands when this horrific war was over. Our people need our leadership. If you're unwilling, 
leave. Our people must rebuild, and we must help unite them. So, we did not fight for freedom, but to conquer this land and our own. We fought to win, and now the Evanuris are as gods. I do not answer to Mithal's annoying lapdog. The people are afraid. They must believe in something. They need strength. And wisdom. They need gods who can protect them. We are not gods. You will learn that. Every lapdog hides a wolf inside. That was strange. They were speaking Elvin, but I understood it. I believe we have experienced a memory in each of our native languages. Not just any memory. One of the Dread Wolves. And the mages who declared themselves my gods? Well, mine and Davrin's. And Rook's. They were supposed to protect people. Instead, they seized power. Assholes. It was so... mundane. Nothing grand or cosmic. No setting fire to the sun. Just talking. Politics. I wish they were monsters. Something grand and terrible. Seeing them like that, they're no better than to venture nobles. But no worse, either. They were people. And people can let you down. All right. What else can we take from this memory? Elgrinon was hungry for power. Did anything he could to get it and to hold on to it. Then Solus, furious at Elgonon's installing himself as a despot, started his rebellion. There's another moving part in this. Mithal. She was keeping the peace. Mithal and Solus were close. The Inquisition found a temple to Mithal, and there were wolf statues everywhere. Then she sides with Elgonon over him. A betrayal. It sounded like Solus was loyal to Mithal. What did... Elganon call him Mithal's lapdog. And then she grabs power alongside Elganon instead of standing for her principles. I'd be angry too. Angry enough to start a rebellion? That's not how he'd see it. He didn't destroy the world. Elganon did. Solus did what he considered necessary to stop him. Solus would try to justify what he did, but he'd also blame himself for what happened. Perhaps these murals aren't simply memories. They're what Solus wishes to forget. His regret. That means they're a way to learn his weak points. Why are we worried about Solus? He's trapped. Right. But the Dread Wolf was the god of trickery. He's looking for a way out. Bet on it. Meanwhile, keep your eyes open in the crossroads. If there's a way to restore the rest of these murals, Solus would have kept it in his hideaway. It'd be nice to get inside his head for a change.